Hey you guys, it's me Sherelle here with Lovely Hustles and today I'm just going to talk to you guys about a very good opportunity that I came across with my Airbnbs. Um, so stay tuned, let's talk about it. Okay, so it has been a little bit of a minute, sorry, but I've been extremely busy um, between my job as an operations manager, managing my own Airbnb and then also uh, this week has been busy. My son had uh, landed a role uh, in a film so we've been filming uh pretty much all week long and he had a birthday a couple of days ago so we had to squeeze that in as well and celebrate him um coming into his younger manhood he a teen child he a teen but anyways i wanted to talk to you guys about some really really good news that i have i'm very excited to let you guys know that i have somebody staying in my airbnb long term Yay! <laughs> a good place to find people to stay long term meaning like more than a month but less than a year is a, a place called furnished finder f-u-r-n-i-s-h-e-d finder f-i-n-d-e-r.com um they do have a subscription that you can pay monthly uh but i kind of got around that for i'm not going to tell you how because <laughs> i don't want to get in trouble but um i found somebody on furnished finder um, and they wanted to stay in my apartment. I gave them a tour because they had been scammed before when they had found a, a, a listing on Furnished Finder. So I didn't mind giving them a tour of the apartment. Um, it was a good experience for me and for her as well. So um, they will be uh, moving in in about a week, week and a half maybe. So I still have some time to book on Airbnb, which is really good because I have some time to make a little bit more money on Airbnb before putting it to rest. <laughs> but think of it like this if you have somebody staying in your unit long term that is like little to no maintenance depending on the terms you set up for your unit so let's talk about that sorry y'all it's like if you hear cars and stuff i'm like really close to a highway and then i'm like waiting right now uh, my son's gonna be filming in about 10 15 minutes so i just came out to my car to do a quick video and just share the good news because i have not had any time to sit and do this for you guys but let's get into it Okay, so what I decided to do as far as terms with uh, staying long term in my Airbnb is um, one thing I really wanted to do and make sure I kind of had control over because I can be a little bit of a control person, especially when it comes to my bed. This is like my very first Airbnb. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to just like have it leased off and somebody staying there long term and I'm not keeping my eyes on it. I'm not paying attention to it. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know doing what i'm supposed to do so i came up with a, an extra um term that comes with staying in my property which is um the cleaning so normally with long-term stays that you have a lot of people avoid that uh cleaning because that's just one more thing that they don't have to worry about well what i did is the opposite because for one, like I said, this is my very first Airbnb. I don't want it to get ruined. I don't want it to get messed up. I want to keep a really good rapport with the apartment complex that I have. So um, one thing that I've made sure to do is include an extra fee in the rent so that they have to get a cleaning required every month, a mandatory cleaning every month. So what they're going to pay for their fee to clean is what I'll give to my cleaner to be able to clean that unit. I don't want to pocket that money. I don't need to pocket that money. I just need for my unit to be cleaned and I need to make sure that I pay my cleaner as well. So I have somebody who's going to take care of that for me um, every month. And if they're unable to, I'll do it. I'll go in and clean. But really, really, really... The cleaning is not only to make sure that that apartment stays clean because they're not going to be there forever, right? They're going to get, they're going to leave at some point in time. The lease will be over. But another reason I want to do the mandatory cleaning at least once a month is I want to get eyes on that apartment. I want to make sure there's not any holes in the walls. There's not any damages to that apartment. I want to make sure that if they have any questions, concerns, complaints, that I'm able to be there physically or my cleaner can be able to take those notes for me and they say, hey, you know, they're having this issue at this apartment, they're having that issue, or they're happy, or hey, you know, there's a big hole in the wall behind the door when I check. So I want to be able to keep tabs on this apartment and make sure that everything is good and still decently in place. So one thing um, that I'm pretty sure you have a question about is like, well, what do you put in a long-term apartment? Like you have it set up and staged as an Airbnb. How do you transition that over to somebody staying long-term? So 
every situation when it comes to long-term leasing of your airbnbs is different everybody has a different situation you know you never know what's what's going on with people and what they need and what they don't need so when i gave her the tour i made sure to ask those essential questions like do you need towels do you need to have the bedding that's already on the bed? Do you need the bed? Is there anything that you do or do not need? Is there anything that you'd like to have? Um, a lot of times when it comes to things that you stage in your apartment, you stage it for Airbnb purposes. So those short term one to four or five day stays, you normally you stock good things that they need for that time. If they're forgetting their toothbrush and toothpaste, you provide that. If, if they need... Um, makeup wipes i provide that as well but those are things i won't leave in that apartment when they move in because they're going to be staying there this is not a short-term stay for them but they did request to leave some towels there they did um want the bedding to be on the bed um they work from home so they don't I, there's not a workstation or a desk in that unit but they didn't trip about it not being there they were like no i have this whole island right here i can use this island to set up my workstation this is perfectly fine one thing that made me aware of needs in an apartment was um, for long-term stays was I didn't have any storage. I didn't have any dressers in the apartment. I didn't have any kind of drawers or anything like that to where they can store their clothes and things. Um, and I offered to provide that, but they were like, no, we'll just, that'll just be one thing I have to buy. But what this person was looking for was like turnkey to the max. Like everything is available. Everything is ready. I mean, I've stocked it with pots and pans, plates, cups, uh, a coffee maker. I have a lot of things that are stocked in there usually for the Airbnb side, but she wanted all of those things. She was like, the more that's in this unit is the less that I have to buy when I move, less things I have to worry about. Um, one thing she likes to avoid is having to pay for moving expenses and having to buy all of these new items that most people have to buy and pay for when they move, cleaning, all of that. So. I definitely made sure that I received the deposit, which I've already received, and then they'll pay their, you know, their month of their rent uh, the day before they move in, and then boom, they'll be able to move in. So everything that I have in there, they wanted. There are uh, cleaning supplies in the closet, and there is an influx of like toilet, all of the toiletries, you know, toilet tissue, paper towels, all of that stuff. So one thing I will do before they move in is I will remove those things out of the cleaning closet. I will still have my locked cleaning closet. And I will have a limited amount of cleaning supplies, just whatever is needed to clean. Um, but as far as the toiletries and stuff like that, it, it's not needed. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to need those items. So I'm going to take those out. The extra towels, extra linens, things like that, that I normally replace every time it gets cleaned. I won't need that in that unit as well. If I could close with the lesson that I learned, let me tell y'all the lesson I learned, okay? <laughs> now I am going to be making quite a bit of extra money off of what they're paying a month per versus what I pay for a month for the rent. But if I could take away a lesson or make a change or do something different, the next time I do get another apartment and decide to do a long-term lease with someone, I'm gonna raise the price up. I'm gonna raise the price up. I'm just going to. Um, when, I, when they asked me about the apartment and inquired and had questions and asked about pricing, they accepted it so fast. I was like, dang, you know? But I'm not tripping because this is my very first baby, you know, that I'm going to be doing long term. So I wasn't tripping because I am going to be making money, period, you know. But I know now my potential to make even more. Because if you think about it, a lot of people who do want to stay long term or are looking for something more like 6 to 12 months, they're in a situation where maybe they don't qualify on paperwork to afford an apartment. Because, you know, nowadays apartments want you to make like 10 times the amount of the rent. So sometimes a lot of people work side jobs, side hustles that are not really documented. Maybe they don't put on their taxes. I don't know. But a lot of people work multiple jobs. So a lot of times those jobs are not documented as actual income. Um, some people just don't want to start all over again with a, a fresh apartment with no uh, furniture in it. A lot of people are looking for furnished op uh, options. They want to be able to have everything in there. They don't want to have to get a moving truck, which costs money. They don't want to have to buy furniture, which costs money. They're looking for a place that's pretty much ready-made and easy for them to move. There are people out there who just don't want, or who don't mind paying a little bit more to just have it easier for them. So I think um, with this experience, I've definitely learned a lot, but I do have a long term. Uh, I'm very excited about that. I'm very, really, 
I'm very happy that I was able to provide this person a place to stay. They're going to pay their rent. And um, let me talk to you about one more thing to prevent those squatters out there, okay? So uh, one thing I was going to do, but now I have changed and I will not be doing is I'm not going to just create this like lease for a long term, right? What I'm saying is basically the lease will be month to month. I will not be doing a, a, a contract where it's going to be a contract that has eight or nine or 12 months on it. That is a good way to prevent people from using squatter white rights and having to stay because the one thing that sucks about squatters is you cannot remove them or make them leave. You have to go to court. So if you know anything about court, it's going to take a whole minute, okay? And you, I don't have time, and I'm, I don't know if you got time, but I don't have time to go to the court, deal with these people, their system, and the way they do their things, the process, it takes time. So all this time, you're still losing money, and you have people in your unit that are just not going to leave because they have squatters' rights, which sucks. So the best thing to protect you from squatters' rights is having a month-to-month -month lease. That right there is something that helps you out a lot because now you're not saying, okay, well, you signed a lease for nine months, so you were granted nine months. I don't know much about squatter's rights, but I know when you do month to month, that eliminates all of those issues. So definitely um, look into squatter's rights. I am not by any means like a squatter's rights like attorney. I don't know much about it, but I was definitely told like, do not do a six to 12 month lease documentation or you know um agreement do it month to month only that will help you out a lot when it comes to people who are trying to do the squatters mess all right you guys thank you so much for watching this video hopefully you learned a little some 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 and i hope that you guys are able to get your own airbnb started if you are interested um somebody asked me in another video like are you still a notary yes i still do notary work as a matter of fact the notary work that I do, I take that money and put it into my Airbnb business. Whether I use that money to buy extra bedding, extra sheets, um, I'll use it to buy like the toiletries that I need. So yeah, the notary money definitely helps me out a lot when I need, you know, something to fulfill my Airbnb unit with. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching my channel. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you'll know when I put new videos out. And I will be continuing to show you all and tell you all about my journey. No, I don't want to teach this. <laughs> I don't want to teach anything about this. I'm not interested in teaching. I'm just sharing my journey, sharing what it is that I'm doing. I am a side hustle page channel is what I talk about. So I definitely want to show you guys what I'm doing and not just always throw out information. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys have a very blessed day. Peace out.